Uh, all the meetings order. So this is the main business meeting of the 72nd World of Science. Uh, so I have a few slides just to kind of uh, uh, make it easier to convey information to people. Uh, I won't really do anything dynamic on the slides. But uh, anyway, the uh, officers uh, at the head table up here are, uh, I have back, we have Lisa Hayes, the videographer in the back. Uh, Jesse Pershing, my far right, uh, is the assistant timekeeper. She'll be timekeeper next year, perhaps. Jolie Slake, immediately to my right, is the timekeeper. Linda Denneroff is to my left, she's the one who does all the work. And I'm the presiding officer. So, a few uh, announcements. People should note that the meeting in, uh, is being recorded and everybody is free to record or take pictures unless the meeting specifically votes to prohibit that, which it rarely if ever does. Uh, due to the acoustics of the room and other problems, uh, if you just have like a real sh really brief motion that can be easily repeated, you know, you can probably do it from your chair. But any debate or stuff like that, you really should come to the microphone uh, uh, to stand here and also put you within a view of the of the video being taken. Uh, hopefully people have noted the attendance list. Uh, where are the attendance lists currently? Uh, back there, okay. So they should probably wend their way to the front of the room and uh, we should try to snag the people coming in to get them to uh, note their attendance. Uh, there is the agenda from yesterday and then there's two sheets of paper which are uh, printed, one which is two-sided, one is one-sided. And those two sheets of paper are the reports of the committees that were appointed yesterday to report back today. Um, there are business meeting attendee ribbons there at the head table. You can just come up and get one. They're the same as yesterday. So, I, if you have uh, any sound making devices, uh, you would to set them to vibrate or something like that. And. Um, no, I'll try to, uh, if it seems necessary, I'll be mentioning and things about procedure as we go along. <clears throat> the one thing is that if you, if you want to uh, gain recognition uh, to speak in debate or to make a motion, uh, generally speaking, you should stand. I don't know if we have any disabled people here, but that would be a problem. I think not. I don't know if we have that. Okay, yeah, okay. Uh, and, you know, if necessary, say, Mr. Chairman or something to get my attention. But, uh, and in general, you, you, if we don't keep a cue, you cannot gain priority and recognition by standing while the previous person is still speaking. You have to wait until they finish, which is only indicated by them stepping away from the microphone uh, rather than necessarily by them just pausing. Um, so all our uh, business and constitutional amendment type business we have for today has time limits, and uh, the Assembly and its wisdom has set Nice short time limits on some things and longer time limits on others. So, yes? Uh, with the chairman for this meeting was the change from the standing rules we made yesterday? Okay, I have, uh, reminded, I have asked to remind people of the change we made to the standing rules yesterday, which I believe refers to the uh, two changes actually, one of which uh, made uh, objection to consideration require a three quarters vote. However, uh, additional consideration is not actually in order for any of the business today because this is all stuff which has already been uh, considered and debated and you can only object to consideration on the initial introduction of a new main motion. Uh, the other is a change to allow the motion postponed indefinitely, uh, which is essentially uh, eliminates a piece of business for the current meeting um, and to provide a uh, well, that's a lot of performance of the date time total for that. However, that change to the standing rules uh, only provided for that motion at the preliminary business meeting, which is not completed. So in fact, those two changes actually have no effect today. Any other parliamentary inquiries? Yeah? Uh, would a motion be in order to uh, reinstate that suspension of the rules at this point? So it would be motion be in order to do what? So to, to
well, the, 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 the rules were suspended, so those changes to the standing rules, which normally would not have taken effect until the end of this business meeting, took effect immediately. So they are in effect, it's just that by their terms, they don't actually apply to anything that, that could happen today. So they're in effect, but they don't actually have any effect. <laughs> I mean, it, it, let, let's assume somebody stands up and says, I have a great idea. And uh, they, they have 200 copies of the written and they bring them up here. And I look at them and say, wow, that's a great idea. I'll add it to the agenda for today at the end. Then when we got to it, objection to consideration would take three quarters and, you know, and, but whatever. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, okay, <laughs> any other questions? Okay, moving on here. So. Uh, item 1.1, two-thirds is good enough, part one. Uh, the debate time limit for this, uh, these are constitutional amendments up for ratification. The debate time was set for two minutes. Is there any objection to ratifying this amendment? Yeah. Please, would you please provide context? What, two-thirds of what? Well, since everybody has carefully studied their agenda, I'm sure that I need to provide only a very brief explanation. But uh, this has to do with uh, Hugo eligibility extension and uh, the current rule. Uh, have, you have to look at your agenda, I mean, or the Constitution and the souvenir book. Um, it's section 3.4.3, which is the, uh, I believe that's the, is it, that's the one which permits the business. Favor motion, that will Okay. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, currently under Section 3.4.3, right? That's yes, correct. Yes. The uh, if, a work, if a work if a work receives uh, limited distribution, the business meeting can currently provide by a three-fourths vote to extend its eligibility uh, for another year. This would replace the three-fourths requirement and reduce it to two-thirds. Is there a speech against? Is there any objection to ratifying this amendment to the Constitution? Yes. Okay, is there any speech against? Any further speeches in favor? We will proceed to a vote. All those in favor of ratification, please raise your hand. Thank you, all those opposed? The ayes have it, and the amendment is ratified. So this will become part of the Constitution effective as of the end of this world time. 1.2, two thirds is good enough, part two. Also a debate time limit of two minutes. There perhaps a speech in favor. <laughs> Uh, although this may turn out to be moot in the long run, 3.4.2 currently provides that the business meeting may by a three-fourths vote to provide the works originally published outside the United States and first published in the USA in the current year shall also be eligible. This would also reduce the vote to two-thirds. It is moot if, I believe it is moot if one of the other things... No, no, no? It's not. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, this similarly re reduces the requirement from three-fourths to two-thirds on one of the other eligibility rules. Is there a speech against? Is there any objection to approving this unanimously? There is, of course. So, any speeches on either side? We will proceed to a vote. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you, all those opposed. Thank you, the ayes have it. The Constitution will be so amended at the end of this world now. Point of information. Okay, Secretary is Ah, excuse me, yes. Um, I believe, am I correct that the hero extension resolution and the hero motion that we passed yesterday with Proviso saying that those go away if these two constitutional amendments yes. were passed. That means that there is no more hero committee and that the and that the not no, yet. Yeah. So, not yet. Because the, 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 still, the question was whether the hero these make the extension to the hero committee move and so forth, and I think the answer is not yet, because uh, we need to get to 1.7 before that's true, because uh, there still is an extension mechanism, uh, and just that the vote is, is different, so you would, could still want a committee that would right. make the motion to make the extension, maybe, if you felt like it. So I believe not. Yes? Can you recognize make a short announcement of these two members? Certainly. Uh, Those who do not bring their program votes, Available on the internet if you have advice for you under Mr. Settler to search on the Constitution. Okay. 
if, if people have ever heard that, if you just switch, search the internet, <clears throat> source of all knowledge, or whispers kind of fiction, you can find the Constitution, which may be convenient for reference. Um, uh, item 1.3, a matter of trust. Uh, this is a pay time set of four minutes. It strikes out uh, a section in the Constitution um, which currently says electronic distribution of publication if offered shall be opt in. That will just go away, making this uh, discretionary, implying greater trust in local committees, I believe, is the reason for the title. Are there any speeches in favor? Any against? if they don't know that they need to do that. And it's also a, a negligible cost to anybody to have it be, remain as an opt-in so, so that it is equally fair to, to those who do not have electronic access. And I do, I do not think we should adopt this. Speech in favor. <laughs> Warren Buff, having just been involved in the first two progress reports for SAS1, we wound up sending over 500 of PR1 to members who did not wish to receive printed progress reports, many of them overseas. This cost SAS1 on the order of how much was it, about $2,500? Per, uh, per PR. That was an unnecessary expense to the Worldcon, which could have been resolved if the Worldcon were given the leeway to solve this in the manner appropriate to it. $2,500. Speech again? My apologies, I was trying to determine whether this is really the only item of business referring to this, which is why I was um, hesitating. Uh, unfortunately, I don't trust Worldcons. Uh, there are many things that Worldcons can manage to grow. Like, for example, being able to turn off the lights in second stage. Mm -hmm. uh, as Kent, which apparently cannot happen here, is more important than anything else. Uh, I'm sorry that Saskatchewan spent $2,500 on having to send out printed publications. They could have made it easier for people to opt in. But for people like Acoustin or Forbes Demo, or Filthy Pierre, I'll take his name in vain, who doesn't have internet access, it'll be much harder for him to get paper publications back if this becomes the default. It is not time for this yet. It is easier for people who have electronic access to fiddle their bits than it is for people without electronic access. Um, we go out of our way to make it easy for people with access issues, and I think this is an access issue, and I think this is a very bad idea. Speech in favor. The effect of this is to remove a micromanagement in the Constitution, binding uh, particular World Cup committees in one very small area. There are many areas in which World Cup committees can screw up. We deal with this on a social level. We deal with this by asking them questions when they're bidding. We deal with this by social feedback mechanisms during the uh, run-up to the World Cup. <laughs> <laughs> there are many ways in which World Cup can screw up. speakers and this is which can screw up, including not paying attention to where the microphone is. Um, there are many ways in which the World Cup committees can make mistakes. We deal with these socially, we deal with these with the bids by asking them questions and managing positions and at their parties and bid tables. Uh, this is micromanagement in the Constitution of one particular small area um, and it's not consistent with the way we do things generally. We should strike this one out and we should deal with these matters in social means the same way we deal with many other matters. Speech again. Right. Uh, 
the way, unfortunately, there's only 10 seconds remaining for speeches against. But, yeah. I originally made the proposal to save money for Worldcon so they did, could charge people for those printed publications, which was my intent, but do not cut away people who need those printed publications that I need. need. Thank you. Speak. Yeah. Both credit and option That's not a problem. That's not a problem to inquire. You know, this is up for ratification, so we can't change it very much. Um, speech in favor? Yeah. There's 10 seconds remaining for speeches in favor. I'm pretty sure that we can tell that somebody can't receive electronic uh, publication because they don't have an email address. Right. Time has expired for both speeches in favor and against. Uh, we'll proceed to a vote. Um, I guess we'll all, so all those in favor of ratifying this amendment constitution, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? I believe the ayes have it. Does anybody want to count? Okay. Request to count. Yeah. Okay, so we'll do a certain uh, vote here. Those in favor of ratifying this amendment to the Constitution, please stand. We'll do things slightly differently than we did yesterday because the room is so wide. So what we'll do is we'll go down one side and up the other side. So it's right. Five. Seven. Eleven.
Hearing none, the amendment is ratified. Next item 1.6 in the zone. The time limit has been set at two minutes for this. This uh, deletes uh, a number of portions uh, of this section 1.8.2 and 1.8.5 in the Constitution. The effect of this is to eliminate the regional residence restrictions on elected members of the Mark Protection Committee. Is there any objection to ratifying this event? Mr. Chairman, I am I correct that uh, because this amendment would not take effect at the end of this convention, it would still apply to the election being held here, although I'm aware that it's probably going to be moved. Yes, uh, the, these regional restrictions still would apply for this business meeting, which uh, later today will probably elect members to the Market Protection Committee. Um, any objection to ratification? Yes? Okay. Uh, any speeches in favor of uh, or against? So I'd like to speak on Okay, speech in favor. So, so as this convention aptly shows, Worldcon is growing out of just North America. Um, the, uh, the idea of separate partitioning for the U.S. is, and not separate partitioning for, say, Europe and Asia and so on, is silly and not rural in the Worldcon sense. Okay, uh, there's no reason anymore. To, to have these kinds of barriers. We got rid of zoning for site selection for similar reasons. And uh, we should just elect the most competent people to the Park Protection Committee, whoever they happen to be, without restriction to geography. And I suspect that with the growing nature of world kind demographics, that there won't be a problem of concentration, uh, whatever problem that might cause. Uh, speeches against? Seeing none, any further speeches? Oh, sorry. States. The fact of this would be that it, it 
such works would automatically be eligible on their first publication inside the United States. Um, uh, it says it's five minutes. Uh, is there any objection to ratifying this amendment? Okay, it's ratified. That concludes the Constitution amendments up for ratification. Sir? For the record, the, uh, the, the, I believe that, that that makes some of the things we passed yesterday moot and uh, discharges committees that we continued at that time. Is that correct? I believe that would be a good thing to do. I'm not sure that it doesn't automatically, but uh, it. Uh, yeah. Okay, yes, sorry, I guess the, uh, the, the motion to continue in the hero committee uh, specifically stated that if this was ratified, then uh, it would not be continued. So the uh, hero committee will not be continued. And uh, the, uh, this uh, makes the earlier past constitutional amendment to uh, change this provision from three quarters to two thirds uh, moot because the whole requirement for a vote has gone away. So, so. Um, what is so um, basically, one point one, I think, one point two. Okay, the, the one, the one of these two, which which affected section three point four point three of the Constitution. Which would right. And she's the one asking. And I'm asking. Three <laughs> points. So one point one uh, was the one that changed three quarters to two thirds in three point four point three. And this constitutional amendment eliminates the requirement for a vote entirely. So one point one is moved. So one point one is now moved. <laughs> one point one. Because for some reason one point one is three point four point three and one point two is three point four point two. That makes it clear. <laughs> so we now get to new business. So, um, the first item, uh, it was originally uh, item uh, 2.1.1 on page 3 of the agenda, the 51 page agenda, but it was referred to a committee, uh, which met yesterday afternoon and reported back a substitution, which basically changes this from I changed it so that instead of constitutional amendments requiring initial passage by the business meeting and then ratification by the uh, members of the society, instead it requires passage by one business meeting and ratification of the second, and then uh, re-ratification by the membership of the society. Otherwise known as two plus one. Uh, is there any objection to replacing the original constitutional amendment with the version reported by the committee? Yeah? Go ahead. Uh, I have uh, questions about substance uh, between the original proposal and the Okay, you need to come up to the front. And so it, it, after this substitution, it will still be open for amendment if people want to make further changes. Okay. okay. Is there any objection to that substitution? <coughs> yes? You object? I object. Okay. Um, so basically it's a motion by the committee to amend by replacement, uh, by replacing the uh, originally proposed constitutional amendment with the one in their report. Uh, so, and there's been objection to that, so are there any speeches uh, in favor of that substitution? Uh, or speeches against? Seeing none, we will vote, yep.
Jack Thorpe. Um, basically, or should you like, uh, basically, um, a procedure takes three years to change the constitution. Is, in my opinion, too long. We have to keep it to two years, and therefore, uh, a two plus one is vastly inferior to a one plus one solution. Is there a speech in favour of the substitution? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I was the appointed chairman of the so-called arithmetic committee, and as I'm aware, you're probably aware, I'm also one of the original proponents of the initial proposal. And while I may not be totally thrilled with it, um, I'm not aware, I have yet to see many changes that are so urgent that waiting one more year and making it three years rather than two totally torpedoes its substance. Constitutions are not supposed to be easy to amend. That's a basic feature of them. It's not a bug. <laughs> the key element to me is adding the element of uh, ratification by the members. And so if a version that includes the House of Revision element of the second year's business meeting is seen as the best way forward, I think we should go with that. The key factor is the ratification by the members. And so I uh, encourage the members to adopt this substitute as more generally palatable. Is there a speech against the substitution? Uh, I think that's a feature of the original proposal. 
Uh, and if we consider the, the uh, 2 plus 1 system in spite of its merits, uh, it, it loses that feature of the original motion. Speech in favor of the Mr. Chairman, move to call the vote. Is there a second? Second. Uh, moved and seconded to call the question. All those who still wish to speak, please raise your hand. Thank you. Now vote on the call of the question. All those in favor of calling the question in the event of a substitution. Thank you. All those opposed? There being more than two-thirds in favor, the question is called. We now get to vote on the amendment by substitution. All those in favor of substituting the committee report version, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those uh, opposed? Okay, the ayes have it, and the committee reported version 2 plus 1 is substituted for the original proposed constitutional amendment. So the committee report version is now on the floor. Um, and, uh, yes? Yes, that does. Uh, we're at 115 seconds for, 130 seconds against. So just about two minutes have been used up for each side of the 20. Uh, I ask unanimous consent to round that to, uh, to 20 minutes total debate time at this point. Sure. Is there any, any objection to that? And as the yeah, speech in favor of the, uh... Mr. Chairman, as I said earlier, I am, a, I was a proponent of the original motion, and I, uh, I did prefer it, but I would kind of live with this, I think. The key element to me is that there are thousands, thousands of members of WSPAS who cannot attend a business meeting. There are over 2,000 supporting members of this convention. This Worldcon is the largest Worldcon ever held, and a quarter of our members even if you know, they can't physically attend the meeting. Now, I'm not in favor of remote participation or proxies of any sort. I believe participation is good. And, but I still believe that the entire membership of the convention, <coughs> the thousands of dues-paying members who cannot attend but want to participate in some way, should have a voice in our affairs. Not an exclusive voice, but they should have a voice in it. I am sensitive to the criticisms of WSPAS that the governance of this organization is solely vested in the hands of about 200 people who, are the, who show up and throw away most of their war time, it would seem. Uh, speaking from personal experience of this, um, and I'm sensitive to the criticisms that there is absolutely no way for all of these other members to have much to do with it. I'm not saying it's going to bring the millennium, but I also believe it would have an effect. It would also derail a rather, in my opinion, legitimate criticism of our process. Now, I was until last year a citizen of a state that has something of a rather wild ride of uh, popular democracy, uh, California. Uh, but nevertheless, in our state, when I was a resident, a citizen of it for 47 years, the general form of amending our state constitution was for our legislature to adopt uh, constitutional amendments by a supermajority. And then everything got submitted to the voters of the state who then had to ratify it at a general election. I see nothing wrong with us adopting something similar for, the, for our organization. I don't think it does any harm. I also think it does some positive good. And therefore, I encourage the members to vote in favor of this constitutional amendment and enfranchise a significant portion of the members of our organization. Thank you. Speech again. I agree that it's laudable to enfranchise a significant portion of our organization, but I don't think this is the right way to do it. We don't need to make amendments harder um, to pass. We're all, it's already fairly slow to pass them. One. Um, and two, um, the uh, we don't need to put trivial uh, bookkeeping changes to our constitution. Stuff like two thirds is good enough, or um, a matter of trust. Well, a matter of trust is pretty good. Um, or the Wispus Accountability Act of 2013. We don't need to spend effort being politicians educating the populace or our populace on these things. We only need to put contentious things before them, and this doesn't do this. It's going to waste everybody's time. Joshua. Uh, speech in favor.
speech in favour, we are paying that you can correct. I, I would question that uh, we as a group are actually able to identify what will be a contentious issue before it explodes. Speech again. Yeah. I still think the enfranch enfranchising everyone in Wispus 
is one of the most important things we can do to move forward as, as a society. Thank you. Speech and answer. Tim Sager. Um, my <clears throat> objection to this motion is based upon information. Basically, we who attend the meeting get to hear the debate about each motion. And if we throw it out to um, the rest of the membership, they will get maybe um, some written documentation, which they may or may not read. But I think that there's careful consideration at the meeting. And what's going to happen out, outside of the meeting, who knows? You know, the, some people will just check in, or they will ignore it, or whatever. You know? So I think for a, a more considered um, result, we should just um, maintain the status quo. Regent Bayer. Chris Hensley, um, we've had several uh, we've had several opponents of this motion speak about trust and trust in the body. Why should the, why should the members of Westfest trust us when it's clear that we don't trust them? Because we think that we know better than them and that we are more informed and that we're the ones that should make new decisions. I don't think that's fair. Yes, they should be cynical of the body because we should always be cynical of the legislative body. That's healthy in a democratic system. Maybe I'm an American, and that's okay, but <laughs> I really feel, though, that it is a matter of trust. We have to trust the business body. I give them a lot more credit than the opponents of the motion currently do. Thank you. Speech again. So being from Massachusetts, what we essentially have here is a town meeting, and town meetings work very well. Uh, I am very concerned that uh, the final ratification by the membership will become essentially a rubber stamp popularity contest and not really worth anything. Kind of like some of you guys are just becoming a popularity contest. Um, if we want to solve this for people like Judy and people working treasury, then I think the solution is proxies. And if you don't, I'm sorry, that's my opinion. Speech in favor? Judy's here. Judy's here. Judy's here. This year, I'm not going to be sure. Still very uh, early. We like to pretend that Whiskus is a society when in fact it's a bunch of people that come to the business meeting and then we give lip service to everyone else being a member if they are a supporting or attending member of the Worldcon. This will actually make the WISPIS members WISPIS members. They will have a say in the governance of the society. Uh, if we want to continue to move forward in the future and include more people, this is the way to go. <laughs> Speech you gains. I've got a question, actually. Sure. Um, this brief just go ahead and uh, Who is responsible? Who will be responsible for counting? The administrating convention, uh, which. But who is it? Is it the same question? No. no. It's up to the administrative convention and whoever they want to ask count the balance. John mentioned that yesterday, Pat. Hi, we've got 10 seconds left on the fourth side and about three seconds left on the yes. Speech against. Ten room. I don't think we've considered that this is going to cost uh, world cons. It is an imposition on world cons that they do this. They have to write it, they have to publish it, they have to pay for mailing it, and they have to provide someone to either add to the site selection process additional paperwork or create a separate process which has to be staffed. Uh, we're short on volunteers this year. We've been short on volunteers every year in the past, well, at least 30 or more. Um, it, it's really, in my opinion, a 
waste of time and energy for us to put this um, imposition on world trauma. Speech in favor? Uh, by how much? Move to extend debate by two minutes. Is there a second? Second. Uh, okay. All those in favor of extending debate time by two minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Uh, these two thirds in favor, it's uh, questionable. Um, I, I believe debate time has been extended by two minutes. Just one on each side. Right? Uh, the next speech would be in favor. Uh, Uh, when we talk about people not being able to make the meeting, I don't think it's because their con job is what's interfering. It's because their real job is interfering, their real lives. Um, it, it's not just like paying 40 bucks for a, you know, site selection voting fee. It costs a lot of money to come from California to London, or from London to California, or all around the world for every world con. So there's a question of um, whether or not uh, with this being able to vote on WISFIS matters is a price performance thing as well as uh, I believe in equal democracy for everybody and whether you are able to afford going to Fulcon or not and therefore I support uh, having general ratification. Speech against? speaker used the word explode, and, and that's what worries me. Um, we've seen so many examples of issues uh, hitting Twitter and exploding in a way that isn't very rational, where people only see sound bites, don't see the context. And uh, it just concerns me that that's how this decision we made. I love social media, but I feel like we haven't learned how to use it in a responsible way yet. Um, so I'm, I'm against this. Speech in favor? Okay. You have 10 seconds. Uh, I'm unconvinced that this will have the benefits that the proponents have mentioned, but it has a sunset clause. We can try it. I don't believe it will do massive harm in the few years that it will have to be in existence before it gets re-ratified. Speech against. 30 seconds remain for speech against. Jonathan Sneed. Um, public votes mean public campaigning and public debates. Unlike the state of California, we aren't born into this group, we are a self-selected fandom. And part of our job here is to maintain the amicability and coherency of the groups so that can main, continue to be a solid community. We should continue that these debates will, in some ways, erode that, even as it works to improve our constitution's pure democracy, that democracy is not necessarily our primary goal. Now, all time for debate has expired. To vote. Move to extend debate by two minutes. Is there a second? Move to extend debate by two minutes. Is there second. a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor of extending debate time by two minutes, please raise your hand. Thank you, those opposed. Thank you. There's been less than two thirds in favor. Uh, debate time is not extended. We'll proceed to a vote. We'll vote by Serpentine voting. All those in favor of this constitutional amendment, please rise. And count off. This is our day. Thirty-three. Thirty-four. Thirty-five. Thirty-six. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. Thirty-nine. 
40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52. By the way, if you have a problem standing, you should just see somebody next to you and comment on behalf. Those opposed, please stand.
given by members of the World Science Fiction Society. Either we should make NASPIC members full members of the World Science Fiction Society, or we should not grant them some but not all of the privileges of membership in the World Science Fiction Society. Speech in favor. Mr. Chairman, we already give people who are not actually members of WISPUS, which is to say members of the previous Worldcon and of the next Worldcon, some, but not all, of our WISPUS voting rights. Um, this is only a natural extension of any convention that WISPUS sanctions. Now, yes, at the moment, WISPUS sanctions only two conventions. We sanction Worldcon and we sanction NASCA. The wording, in fact, is generally stated so in such a way that if at some time we should decide to sanction other conventions, they would be included in this. And if we should reduce that scope, as I'm sure some of you here actually want to do someday, then those groups would be removed from it automatically without any need to change it. But as long as this organization sanctions NASFIX, I believe it is appropriate for us to extend to their members the same courtesy we do to the previous and following World Cups. Time for favor is expired. The speech against. I would worry with um, giving this right to NASPIC, which is the North American Science Fiction Convention, that we would. Uh, be opening the door for the possibility of giving uh, such privileges to other uh, countries' uh, national conventions. Motion to extend to Dave by two minutes. Second. The mood and second to extend the debate time by two minutes. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? There being less than two thirds in favor, uh, the wait time is not extended. I mentioned time in favor is expired. Are there any further speeches against? Uh, Patrick Malloy, and in this current situation, which I also have issues with, uh, of being allowed uh, three WorldCon years uh, members to nominate, it just seems to me if you can't take enough interest in World Cup to join once every three years, you don't really have any business nominating for the Are there any further speeches against? It's already been said earlier today that uh, the World Science Fiction Convention 
world's our Twitter society, it's a world society. It's also been pointed out that it's been dominated by America. This motion only increases the American domination and must be resisted. <laughs> Would it or would it not 
um, have invalidated the Nathan Bradley Creech for best sermon. It would invalidate it in our view because if we're saying um, the publication, the audio book, counts as first publication, which is how the industry um, rules, then it would basically rule it out for subsequent consideration. Um, the other thing I would say, actually, which I thought you might be asking about, is the question of consolidation. Sometimes we allow consolidation. If a bunch of people on, say, say, I think it's a novel, I think it's a novella, and it's within the wiggle room, we consolidate the votes in the, in the category the administrator selects. We don't do that when people are voting for different things. So an example would be um, Game of Thrones, some people nominate season one, some people nominate one episode. George decides, I'm going to go with the season. We don't move the votes for the episode across because we say that's not, they were voting for the episode. In the same way, by being explicit, it says, if you're recognizing the performance, you put it in BDP. If you're recognizing the story, you put it in story. And we would say the administrator would not then be able to consolidate the votes. And I hope that, that was a use for one other possible objection. I think that's all I'd like to say on that. Thank you. Sure. If, if uh, there are two circumstances, if the story comes out in the same year as the audio book and somebody puts it down in fiction, you don't know whether they heard it on audio or in book, so you're going to say it's a book book story. And the fact is, let's take a different case now. Let's imagine that um, somebody publishes a book on Harry Potter and then Stephen Fry the next year did a fabulous rendering of it as an audio book and it got thousands of votes in BDP. If that had happened after Harry Potter won the Hugo, I'm pretty sure we would have allowed the BDP in the same way we would have allowed a film of the book or a radio play. If people are recognising the performance, they're recognising the dramatic content and not the story. Otherwise, we wouldn't be voting for movies made out of books. <laughs> I'd like to. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Chris Antolini, I would like to move to amend after the final period to put <laughs> any work nominated in the fiction category. It worked. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> it worked nominated in this category. Or a work nominated for a fiction category under these rules shall not also be eligible in another category in this calendar year. Um, what if only Point one book came out that was 
denominated in two separate categories. Then that work, one would be claiming that the voters have said that rendition is a dramatic presentation and the text is a story and if only the audio book came out it would still be eligible in both categories under the wording as we have now so as a and as one of the current UDO administrators I would absolutely rule that if only the audio book came out and it was nominated it received sufficient nominations in both categories absolutely both categories, it gets two nominations. Uh, the timekeeper would like to tell people that the time for has long past expired. <laughs> so, there's an there's amendment made. Is, uh, no, no, that's no problem. Is there, a, is there a second for the amendment? Hearing on the amendment fails, what was it? Okay, we have second. Uh, so, we now to speak on the amendment by uh, the remaining time gets reallocated as what's the whole Yes. Um, what he's being asked is if it was a written work and six months later an audio book came out for the same work under this rule, would it be considered a the same work? My understanding of the wording is that it would not because the wording is explicitly a work nominated, a, a work specifically nominated under these rules, so it would only apply to to something that was not made because it was essentially an audio book or you know, explicitly not an or explicitly a single ebook work, they would be separate because of the wording of the rule that we are amending. Yes. 
Leach against the amendment? Time on. Four. Mary Robinette Cole. If we were talking about a book and a movie that came out in the same year, we would let them both be eligible because those are two very different works. And I think that the number of cases, the number of incidents in which an audiobook is going to be the best dramatic presentation that someone has heard all year are going to be very few. And if it is the best dramatic presentation that someone has heard all year, and the best written work of fiction, by God, we should let the voters nominate that. Uh, so it's kind of fair as well. Go ahead, and any further speech to engage the amendment? Warren Buff, perhaps this is a bit of Platonism, but I do believe that the story itself is separate from the, from the method of presentation of the story, as is made clear in the original motion. And I believe this amendment is folly. Uh, further speeches against the amendment? I'm John Adams. Uh, I think perverse to ban an audiobook from best presentation uh, nomination in the year that the uh, work is first published when it would clearly still be eligible in future years if it was a new audiobook reading, whether the original publication was in print or, or in audiobook form. And therefore, I think the, uh, this amendment is ill-formed. Yes. I'd like to ask the chair and thank you for explaining what's going to say at the time about this pending and the underlying proposal. Well, the time is unified. There is no time left uh, in favor, currently. And against, we have 45 seconds. Yes. So, any further speeches against the amendment? I know it's a call question. Second. Uh, is there any, okay, how many people wish to wish to speak? Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Thank you. The nays have it. The amendment is defeated. Uh, there is still debate time and the negative remaining on the main motion. Oh, well, the secretary wants to be brave here. We're in, we're in pause, and uh, uh, you haven't recognized it, so uh, you, if this people will you can wait there, whichever you prefer. Uh, uh, suggesting that in the future and any time that the words of the current Constitution are uh, to be interpreted in a particular way. Uh, and I don't think that we will actually see any effective uh, change in the way Hugo's Hugo are administered merely by adopting this particular uh, amendment. I don't think I want, I don't think I want to, to propose a, a, a resolution in substitution. I think that would be the appropriate thing to do. All, all debate time has expired. It has been moved and seconded to extend debate time by two minutes. All those in favor of extending debate time, please raise your hand. Thank you all those opposed for raising your hands. The nays have it. Debate time is not extended. So we'll now proceed to a vote. For those in favor of this constitutional amendment, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Uh, the ayes have it, and the amendment passes. It will be uh, called for ratification next year at Sasquatch. Yeah. Yeah. 
So the next item of business is 2.14. 2.14, yeah, 2.14, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> performance of our fans, too. The main time has been set at 10 minutes. Um, and to do the third category as put on page 10 of the agenda, best fan performer. Um, so is there a speech in favor of this? Again, Joshua. We have before us an opportunity to open our big tent and demonstrate that fans performing for other fans are just as valued as fan writing, fan art, and fan things. Okay, thank you. I've heard a number of arguments against this proposal, but none against the core idea that fan performance is valuable, because it is valuable. I've heard that costumers and filters have their own rewards, that full-time musicians would be eligible, and nearly everyone would be eligible, and that the category was simply too broad. But we generally don't have an issue with category having too many items people want to nominate. It's having too small a category that's an issue. If you look at best related work, we don't have any problem finding enough nominations to fill the category. Now, as far as eligibility goes, that's a flaw. That's not a flaw, that's a feature. We trust the nominators to tell the difference between fan and pro writing, Fan and pro um, art, I'm pretty sure they can tell the difference. Someone being able to support themselves on their fan work doesn't mean it's not fan work, it means we really like it. The difference between my work and that of, say, S.J. Tucker, or Tom Smith, or Leslie Fish is far smaller than that between them and Disney or the BBC. Finally, do you know who else has their own awards? Fancy writers, movie makers, television producers, podcasters, comic creators, and novelists. Thank you. And still Perry and Murray. Uh, while I am sympathetic to recognition of fan performances, I am not in favor of another award for a person rather than a specific work. Uh, we've had trouble with the best artist. We tried to do the artist awards and that didn't work uh, because people were not familiar enough with individual works. Uh, I think people are familiar enough with individual performances that those could be a category and, and nominated. I think there are too many performers out there that have particular followings that would best be nominated because their fans will nominate them for anything. Uh, and I think that it is a, it is a broken category. Speech in favor. Further speeches against. In general, I hate reputation, you guys. And works, we can look at the work and decide how good it is. When we have something for a performer or an artist or things like that, then you frequently end up with people winning you guys based on oh, a single work that was published once as compared to an entire body of work because that artist was a really great artist and they happened to publish one lousy painting <laughs> except that it was actually an interior work. Um, fan performers or any other kind of performers or any other kind of work where you are judging by a body of work with particularly when in this case you can't force people to see what work was done in that year? At least with artists, we can now make them show what work was generated in that year. I hate reputation. I want the Yugo to be for work in that year. Speech in favor. Um, I'm, 
I'm fan from Japan and actually I didn't have enough um, I'm not here in World Cons, I'm in World Cons. So I didn't have previous previously I didn't have a chance to to actually see the fan performance to go, uh, going on all over USA. But now we have Vimeo, YouTube, anything that fan can you know record the performance and upload to the internet and we fans are able to see them from all over the world. So I think this new fan performance is very um, is eligible to Hugo's because we can know that maybe the performance time date is clear, then we can see that the performance was done in the previous year, then I think it should be eligible for Hugo's. I follow instructions well. <laughs> uh, first, I'd like to echo um, uh, the comments of my esteemed colleague, Zuri Yala, um, about reputation and definability over a given year and things like that, and block voting and so on. Um, the other is, is that unlike many legal documents, it was just a, a constitution has no definition in it, right? We don't spend pages and pages defining what fan is, or what science fiction is, or whatever, right? Because that's folly. It really is attempting to box things that can't be boxed. Uh, similarly, uh, performance is a kind of art, right? Performing arts are art. And if we want to honor them, they really belong in the fan art categories, uh, either you know as uh, um, a best you know best artist or best fan artist or in that kind of category. Uh, it doesn't really. It's so specialized. This category is so specialized and so um, tiny in, in its scope that it really lacks the um, broadness of, of of the other categories, and I really don't think it should. Oh, and I would have, I would have supported, or might, might well have supported it if it had been best performance rather than best performer. Speech and paper. Uh, okay, can you, what is it? Well, we need We have a motion to amend. So I would like to amend this to best perform, best fan performance. Uh, it would read, a performance in any medium which has appeared at conventions or through other public, non-professional display during the previous calendar year. So it's moved and seconded to strike out, uh, I guess change the name. That instead of which, I'm not told. Best fan performance and uh, change uh, performing artist to performance. So that's really just three words of change. Yes? Yes, I turned whose work to Point of that. order. Okay. Repeat the question. Question, please. I didn't hear that. Repeat, repeat the question, Mike, please. The, the, the question was, was about the text. It said, should we strike out whose work? And I said, yes, we're striking out whose work and replacing the that. I believe that's not normal. Okay, well, actually, the, the thing is that I think it's, we should, as with the best fan artists, we should, including at a convention or convention, should also be added. It's, it's already in the text. text. It's already in the text. We don't need to amend it. I did not see it in the text here, which is why. I have a question. There's been lots of seconds. Hold on a second.
funds for the amendment and it's assigned to half to each side and so, it's exhausted yeah. and they're working. So, so I believe this is the wording. Oh, I put it up here. Then move, okay, let's see. So we did have an amendment on the floor, but we protected it to add four minutes to the total debate. Six, sorry, we protected to add six minutes to the total debate time. All those in favor of attending the debate, please raise your hand. Thank you, all those opposed. Thank you, the ayes have it. Three times extended by six minutes, three on each side. And you should look at what's on the screen to see if it's what the amendment is. <coughs> Things that are intended intentionally monetized. 
and yes, we, we do want to exclude things that are being done primarily for monetized purposes. Okay. We have five seconds left for parliamentary inquiry. Sure. Uh, does, does the Constitution already provide definitions of bans, uh, professional, semi professional, and bans? No, they relate to the No, they're specific to categories. Do we have over? So the time I yield to those against. Those expired. Time has expired on the, the uh, side in favor. Anybody who wish to speak against this amendment by substitution? Not five seconds. Madam President, who would ask you at this point? Front back or ask questions? No, you can. Okay. Nobody, nobody wants to, so we'll proceed to a vote on the amendment by substitution unless somebody wishes to move to extend the debate time here further. Move two yes. minutes. How many? Two minutes. Two minutes. Is there a second? Second. Okay, moving second seconds to extend debate time by two minutes. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. All is closed. Thank you. The day is done. That's what two thirds in favor. So we'll now vote on the amendment by substitution. Those in favor of replacing the original proposed constitutional amendment by the version on the screen, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed. Thank you. The ayes have it. Uh, debate time has expired. We now are on the main question of whether or not to approve this as a constitutional amendment, which would, if approved, would then come up for ratification next year. Is it, uh, is there a second for the? Second. Been moved and seconded to extend debate time by four minutes. So those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. Those opposed? Thank you. The less than two thirds in favor. Debate time is not extended. Uh, there's a brief pause for the secretary to catch up.
I think the election will be fairly simple because we have three slots and we have three nominees and there's no, uh, the, uh, there is still the zone restrictions in effect because that constitution, the elimination of that part of the constitution does not take effect until the end of this World Cup. However, uh, there was a deadline at 5 p.m. yesterday for nominees to file paperwork saying they agreed to, to be nominated. And that deadline is passed, so there only can be these three nominees. So perhaps somebody can make a motion that we get done. Uh, so, uh, yeah. uh, I'd like to move that we elect the slate of some people by our Okay. Is there any objection? It's on the screen. Any objection to electing these by acclamation? Hearing none, they are uh, uh, So, David Hardy and Linda Benaroff are elected by acclamation. Uh, John Coxon is elected, and Warren Buff uh, is previously serving as withdrawn reps. Uh, we applause for his contribution. <laughs> The signing list. The signing list. Where are the signing list? They're up front. There's one in front.
Dave McCarty. Um, perhaps it's just my cranky nature. Um, but some ideas are just on their face dumb. And the people who think that I got one nomination, I'm a nominee, and that's valid, are the, frankly just ill-informed and dumb, and I refuse to yield to stupid people. <laughs> you yield to Mark. <laughs> Feeling, uh, and I'm not yielding to them. It's all the people who listen to them and get confused. Uh, I, you know, I've tried dealing with this in encyclopedia, and I frequently have to sort of add a little extra explanation to explain this because we are using the term in a way that's not generally understood. Uh, I think this is a useful step forward and has, as far as I can see, no substantive effect whatsoever. So I'm in favor of it. Speech again. Uh, I think that the, the, the common knowledge of what nominee means uh, for awards, Academy Award nominees are not people who somebody suggested should get nominated, but they are the finalists. Uh, I agree that these people are stupid, and, and we should tell everybody that they are stupid at every given opportunity. Uh, the tr confusion between nominee and finalist is actually a fairly strong linguistic confusion. Uh, two years ago, when I first went to set up a database to handle the Hugo Award nomination process, I foolishly named the entries in the table that people submitted nominee. So even somebody who's been part of the society for some time can make that mistake, I think. Clarifying this is a good idea. Time in favor of the expire. Uh, speech against. Seeing none, we'll proceed to a vote. All those uh, in favor of this constitutional amendment, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? The ayes have it. And this will come up for ratification next year and successful. Uh, next item arising from the committee report uh, 3.2.1 in on page 18 of the agenda and in the version reported by the committee in the new handout for today uh, on page three. The selling votes committee reported. This version would take a very slight change.
Okay, proceeding uh, next item, then this is uh, 3.21. Uh, this is the, the report of the, uh, some of those committees reported a uh, <coughs> substitution, which actually, I believe, changes only one word. Is that true? <laughs> changes four words, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, and we had set to make time left for eight minutes, so um, I guess the chair of the committee would like to. We do understand that there was some confusion uh, with the original wording. We believe that our minor students have cleared this up and moved the reference to 4.2.1 and making it generally 4.2 because there's also text in 4.2.2 which matters to us. Uh, we believe that, clear, that clearing that up makes it absolutely clear which supporting membership rate we're talking about. Uh, however, we did not say that they shall not provide one because we want World Cons to still be able to give their guests of honor voting rights. Because if we're making someone a guest of honor, we do think they're an important part of the community. At least that's the theory. Right. I'll yield for a question. Is this intended to only guest of honor? Uh, he's asking if this in, if this is intended only for guests of honor, and or if, or if conventions may give other memberships including voting rights, and we have left it as an option to them that they may uh, at their discretion. However, if they were giving away voting rights willy nilly, they would probably attract the ire of the society. Another question? Do you another question? I'll yield for another question. Do we have reports of committees that have been discounting memberships in the past, or is this a problem that really doesn't... That, that, that's a debate. That, that's full on debate. Uh, sorry. sorry. No, I'm asking you, do we have... Right, that, that's a debate. debate. The question is on the meaning of the motion or from yeah. it. It's not, that's not a question of the meaning well, of the motion. Well, I'd like to yield the floor and let you come up and debate, though. Uh, if you wish to, is, is there a speech to okay, so that's... Yeah. Uh, speech against? I have speech against. Uh, typo. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I, I apologize as the as the secretary of the Seven Wispas Samurai uh, that that worked on this yesterday afternoon. I believe we're missing a word in the middle line of it. It should say Wispas voting rights were less than the cost of the supporting membership. I ask you to can simply correct that. Is there any objection? Hearing none. So this is corrected by inserting. The word B between that and cost of the second line of the version reported by the committee. Yeah. Yep. Um, does uh, tremendous amount of material that we have in the Does that mean just rights to speak on the team, but it is needed, or other rights to speak on the team? Site selection, you know, in the business meeting. Uh, and maybe it's not a ratification of constitutional amendments. Um, yes. Chair, point of order, as we now have additional noise, every effort to, for clarity in speech is, is requested. <laughs> okay. Apparently the level of background noise has increased in the vicinity of the uh, where it's being recorded, so people should be extra careful to be clear and uh, audible. Uh, so we look for speech against this constitutional... Okay, well, actually what we have is... Uh, this is an amendment by substitution. Is there any objection to just replacing the uh, version of the uh, original agenda with the amendment by substitution reported back by the committee? It just has a few words tweaked for clarity. Seeing no objection, uh, we've replaced the version of the agenda with the version reported by the committee with the one word typo fix. And uh, we've had a speech in favor. Is there a speech against? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I've had it pointed out to me that WISFUS does sanction one other convention that under limited circumstances does have a membership right. Uh, some of you may not be aware of this because it doesn't happen very often, but the NASFIC, which is one of our conventions, and as long as it is one of our conventions, we should stop ignoring it. Um, NASFICs can, under limited circumstances, select NASFICs. And that would be a voting right. And I believe we should generalize this rule and would suggest that we um, change the title to, uh, to strike the word WISPAS from the title, just to say membership types and rates. 
and to uh, replace the word Worldcon, and then they would actually to change the wording of it so that it would say that no convention committee shall sell a membership that contains any voting, uh, any convention voting rights for less than the cost of the supporting membership required by section 4.2 in the selection of that convention. And I move that as an amendment. And I actually am going to ask unanimous consent that we modify it that way. Okay, then I move the amendment then. Okay, well, I, I believe the titles have no significance, so uh, the change to delete business from the title <coughs> is uh, frivolous. That's what the deleting, so it would change if we would get to say, uh, no committee shall sell membership that includes any voting rights for less than the cost of the supporting membership required by section 4.2. In the selection well, that's of okay. that. Yeah. Well, okay, I mean, it doesn't matter that much. The key element is the word world cons need to change to, con to convention in the relevant portions to generalize the word. So the, the, the first and last occurrence of, the, there are two occurrences of world cons, the last one also needs to change to convention. To a convention. Convention, okay. okay. No, conven no convention committee shall sell a membership that, that includes any WISPAS voting right for less than the cost of the supporting membership required by section 4.2 in the selection of that convention. Okay, so in that case, I can once again ask unanimous consent. Okay. I ask unanimous consent that we modify the motion on the floor so that it would read, no convention committee shall sell a membership that includes any WSPAS voting rights for less than the cost of the supporting membership required by section 4.2 in the selection of that convention. Effectively, it just strikes out WorldCon and inserts convention so that it applies to all WISPAS conventions. I have a question. Uh, I guess I'll give, well, first of all, is, in that case, I guess it's the unanimous consent not given and the motion the amendments. Yeah, well, uh, is there a second? Okay. okay. So yeah. I will yield for questions. Okay. I'll uh, yield for the first question there from Steve. Uh, for the selection of this convention, does that mean that if there's different supporting rights from NASFIC, and the Worldcon, then they, they both could have different rights. Well, this applies to the selection of that of that convention. Whatever voting be applied to the selection of that convention. If it was an aspect, it would be the voting fee associated with the selection of that aspect. Right. If it was a Worldcon, it would be the voting fee associated with the selection of that Worldcon. Yeah. Yeah. I yield for a question here. If the sections about NASFIC say that it's uh, selected in the same way as the Worldcon. I have no objection to including that. If no one, if, if this, at that point we are suspending the rules to add it. There's a. It was pointed out that it probably should be 4.2 and and 4.8 to be consistent with the cross references. Indeed, actually, why don't we just say section four? Okay. Article four. Or article four. Or, yes, you're right, stylistically. Article four. This is why we don't do this stuff on the floor that often, guys. All right, were there any other people trying to ask me questions? Uh, the proposal is to uh, substitute then, uh, no convention committee shall sell a membership that includes any WISPAS voting right for less than the cost of the supporting membership required by Article 4 in the selection of that convention. And I've probably used up my side's entire debate time. Right, you certainly have. So, so there were, yeah. I've run out of time. What's your question? <laughs> so, so I believe that uh, we, we decided that were this amendment was on the floor, uh, and the speech time in favor of the amendment has expired. So, is there any speech against the amendment that is to say against this change in wording? Um, I'm concerned about 
potential side effects. So, for instance, if we were to revisit and uh, pass the voting rights for Mastic uh, in the future, you could have a position where you had a 20, as they say, a $40 supporting fee for Worldcom and a $20 supporting fee for Mastic, and suddenly all the people who want to vote in the Hugos can buy $20 <coughs> Hugo voting rights. I, I prefer the simpler version that we had before. So, are there any further debate, any further speeches against the amendment? <coughs> Seeing no further speeches against the amendment, we will vote on the amendment. This is the change in wording. Uh, all those in favor of this change, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Thank you. The ayes have it, and the wording is so changed. So, uh, since we have been... So the, the time the affirmative has expired is about 50 seconds left uh, against. Does anybody wish to speak against the constitutional amendment uh, as changed? So, Dr. This, um, um, this amendment would um, prohibit Worldcons from offering uh, limited, um, unwaged and other uh, poverty um, associated memberships with, with full right and rights. So therefore, I, um, I oppose it. Are there any further speeches against? No. Never mind. Any further speeches against? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote on this tweaked and amended and substituted uh, thing here. So, uh, all those in favor, please raise your hand. Thank you. All those opposed? Thank you, the ayes have it, and uh, this will come up for ratification if it's asked one. Uh, I don't believe there's anything else, I don't believe there's anything else arising out of the uh, business or business meeting committees. <coughs> uh, are there any issues arising out of the World Fund and Aspect Financial Reports? Um, yesterday, during uh, the financial reports, I was asked about a spot called holding spot on Saskatchewan's financial report. Um, I got in contact with our treasurer, Bruce Farr, and um, our uh, uh, bookkeeper, Lisa Gocherigan. And what that is, is that we get bulk uh, transfers of money from uh, PayPal and from Square and they have to be matched up with the appropriate memberships, right? And so, well, until the secretary, or the bookkeeper has time to do that, she puts the, those bulk monies in there and then later distributes them to their appropriate categories. So it's just an accounting holding spot for that. Uh, the memberships are all, of course, recorded by the register system, that's all fine. It's just a matter of precisely accounting, oh, this much went to attending memberships, this much went to supporting memberships, why the questions about that, or is that clear? That's clear. Thank you, Len. No. <clears throat> Any further matters rising from the Volk on NASA financial reports? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, 
didn't believe Mr. Palmer answered here today, but yeah. yes, yeah, I indeed I am. Okay, well, I'm assuming, John, you wish to still ask the question. Uh, I, I, I might thank you. Will you yield? I will happily yield yeah. to you, Mr. Uh, I, I, I appreciate it. Hi.
this point, uh, it, it would appear so. Um, but until the donations have actually been paid, I wouldn't like to, I wouldn't like to commit myself to that. Uh, people have promised that they will pay the remaining money, but that simply remains a promise at this point. Okay, thank you.
Uh, I don't think this has necessarily been scheduled explicitly by programming for this convention, and therefore there hasn't necessarily been good outreach to former Worldcon chairs. Many of you are here in this room. Uh, could you please make an effort to contact the other former Worldcon chairs? And there will be an item in the newsletter if they read the newsletter, but shortly after the adjournment of the main business meeting in this room, it should be the opportunity for the Worldcon chair site selection stands at the conclusion of the site selection business meeting. Shortly thereafter, as soon as we can or get it organized, will be the Worldcon Chairs photo opportunity right here. And it would be before the NBC meeting. We have to get the photo op out of the way and then we'll deal with the NBC meeting. So yes, go and go forth and, and contact those former chairs as well and make sure they know. Thank you. Uh, any additional announcements or queries? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Kind of Parliament question in a way. Thank you. Um, uh, as mentioned yesterday, I'm the former chairman of the European Science Fiction Society, but it's got nothing to do with that. Now, um, <clears throat> what I'm asking about is most countries which have an active science fiction community also have a national science fiction convention, a NATCON, a NATFSCON, or whatever you call it. <coughs> Under the WSFS rules, North America, as far as I know, is defined as everything north of Mexico, right up to the uh, North Pole. Am I America. correct or am I open to it? All of North America. All of America. All of America. Even though it says North America. North America. North America. North America. North America. North America. There is, excuse me, there, there is not really an excuse. Okay, okay, well, okay. okay. well if, if, if we take, excuse me. There isn't an official definition of North America as such, but the former regional definitions really constitute that, and, and they make it clear that, that all of Canada, U.S., Mexico, Sepia, Mimelon, the Caribbean, and Central America are all considered to be part of North America. So, so basically, Hawaii, everything, Alaska, et cetera. Everything North, North America with the islands and so on, right? Now, yes, but not anything south of North America. Uh, south, south, south of Mexico is not considered. So Honduras and all. Correct. Correct. Or the, the, the main contention is, to my knowledge, and I'm open to correction here. Sorry, so I'm just trying, To my knowledge, and I'm open to correction here, there is no major activity in Mexico. Canada has its own national science fiction convention, as far as I know. And there's the major country which has an off-road science fiction activity, but doesn't have a national science fiction convention. And that country is the United States of America, its territories and possessions. And therefore, I think it should be considered but the NASA term ought to be changed to USFIC, United States Science Fiction Convention. And that is something I'd like to leave with everybody to think about. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay, are there other announcements or questions? Yeah. 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 Yeah.